another woman was strangled. Just came over the wire. I'm killed in the follow-up. You don't have a story. How many women have to die before it's a story? I grew up in Boston and I had heard about the Boston Strangler my whole life. But when I started reading about the case a few years ago, I realized that I really knew nothing about the story. And what I discovered was this incredibly layered murder mystery with all these unexpected twists and turns. And then I discovered these reporters, Loretta McLaughlin and Jean Cole, who were, you know, among the first reporters to connect the murders. They really broke the story of the Boston Strangler and they gave the Boston Strangler his name during the course of their reporting and felt like telling the story through their perspective would be a really compelling way to revisit this case. More than the details of the case, I was interested in, you know, the particular experience of a Boston detective in the force at that time and what his kind of day-to-day -day life would be, what his behavior would be, how he would talk, what his relationship to a journalist might be like, a woman trying to break the glass ceiling in a, a tough environment as a journalist in the 1960s. You're not covering a homicide. I think the murders are connected. I love journalism films, and I really respect and admire good journalism. And they came up against a lot of obstacles in trying to do the work that was so important to them. So for me, that was sort of the layer of it that was really a story worth telling. I don't think I would have been passionate about a film about the Boston Strangler if it were not for these two journalists. True crime is, is a worldwide obsession, trying to kind of understand the psychology of of people that are either driven to or have some compulsion uh, to commit those kinds of acts of violence is just, it's like endlessly fascinating and, and terrifying and, and it's a curiosity and that, that's hard to ignore.